So our announcements for the week are just a friendly reminder that next week on November 11th, there will be no BCF because it's Remembrance Day, but also we have Reading Week. So enjoy your time just away from the campus and with your family and your friends. And then the other event we have coming up is on November 22nd. And there's this wonderful um, couple who hosts us at their house and they give us a wonderful warm meal. Um, so if you want to come to that, please let one of the leaders, so Lance McKenzie or Alicia, know. Or you can message our VCF uh, group page and we'll reserve a spot for you. And once you do that, I will let you know exactly where you need to go and need to be. So again, that's on November 22nd and that's starting at 6 p.m. Thank you guys and have a wonderful evening or day. There's a lot of different people out there. There's definitely different types of Christians. And so today we talked a lot about those different types of Christians. And we talked about especially how like two people can work together to make kind of the sum of their parts better than the whole. What are kind of the main differences between Christians who have been part of the faith for a while and Christians who are kind of more new to the faith? And how can we kind of support each other and work together? So for those who are new to the faith, I think a very important thing for you guys to do is to reach out and ask questions. And um, yeah, get to know people who've been going on their faith journey for a lot longer than you because they have a lot of wisdom that they can impart. And I promise you that you can ask them almost any question and they probably won't think it's stupid. And in regards to people who've been running this race like a lot longer than you have and how they're supposed to interact with you, I say they need to have patience. And at the end of the day, the most important thing is to make sure that they understand like the simple gospel, like Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And that's how we're saved by faith, by grace alone. It's not by works or anything like that. And just to get back to the basics of the Bible and what it's saying and what it's talking about before trying to get deeper meanings out of it, because you need to have the foundation first before you can start thinking about the Bible in a new way. New Christians often do rush ahead, which is a very good trait to have. And old Christians, I shouldn't say old, and more lifelong Christians, not just the elderly Christians or anything. We've been going on for a while, and so we know a lot of the stuff, like some of the very basic stuff for us. And I'm, I know I've been a Christian for a while. I know, Mackenzie, you said you're a Christian. I'm assuming you've been a Christian for quite a while, Alicia. Yes. So we're, we're all speaking from the experience of lifelong Christians. We know we know a lot more in terms of actual biblical knowledge than newer Christians. The newer Christians often have that, you know, they have a different viewpoint. And that was sort of in the Bible in Acts chapters 11 and 12. That was definitely Paul and Barnabas, or I guess Saul at this point and Barnabas. Saul had just been, he's just a new Christian. Barnabas was a Christian for a while at this point but they're still working together on their missionary journey. The other interesting thing about Barnabas and Paul was that Barnabas is very quiet and very encouraging. And Paul, as we definitely learn from later books in the Bible, is very, very not that. So I think we're also speaking from a very similar viewpoint of being encouraging, quiet, not very challenging. So how can we work with those more challenging people and how can they work with us? I personally think like the biggest thing that you need to do is just be in a state where you love the person and accept the person and just, you know, no two people are different, but that's honestly like a beautiful thing. Like we're not meant to be the same. We're not meant to be clones. And mm -hmm. so I think if you put love on above all else that you guys can make like your differences either work out or you can compliment each other or you can even just work through those differences and yeah, just make something good out of it. 
it it comes to mind the whole one man sharpens another as iron sharpens iron like two totally different things and two totally similar things two very different or similar people can come together we talked a bit about how um, people in today's world tend to be a lot more like selfish than the people in the world at the time of like yeah. um, Paul, Peter, Barnabas, like like the the like Christian church fathers, and how like we even like if I even look at myself for example, I see like I want what I want when I want it, hmm. and like we still like in a world today where it's so much easier to for example turn on your screen and get that like affirmation from your screen or whatever it may be to get like that formal satisfaction so quickly like we just want what we want all the time and so we're in this world where we're constantly getting fed what we want what we want what we want and at the time when this um, book was written the book of acts these people lived a completely different life than we do now not saying that they didn't have, like, they had physical interaction with people, but they didn't rely on their devices or they didn't get everything quickly like they needed. Mm -hmm. It's not like they just went to the fast food, like McDonald's, for example, and got their burger and fries in two minutes and then ate it right away. Like, they had to work hard for everything they had. And so I personally think that when you have to work so hard for what you have, like you that, like, puts you in a place where you understand, like, the work that it takes to get somewhere or to make something for example and so you can be a lot more generous um, because you just you have that posture in your heart yeah we we talked a lot about that too and we kind of had we were debating as to whether or not we are more selfish and two of us came out of it like eh, kind of on the fence and two of us were kind of like very yes were as a whole more selfish well, we just said that the church community today, or any community today, looks very different than it did during Bible times. Mm. So we don't really know how we can compare because we don't know everything about society during yes. biblical times. And yes, people gave lots of money and lots of time in the biblical times, but that still happens today. And people dedicate time and lots of people give money. Um, we just don't always see when people are giving That's or true. we don't know when people are giving their time we just don't always know and we like it's it we know that it still happens we just don't know if we could say if we're more selfish or more generous than in bible times i think we also have a very rose tinted view of what happened in bible times because like you look at all these biblical heroes and like oh david was so amazing uh, Paul was amazing, but like Paul even said, he was one of the worst of the disciples. And it's like, yeah, that's <laughs> no, <laughs> well, <laughs> no, he was he was a good guy, but <laughs> he like, just wasn't making himself to be like bigger than he was. Like he was humbling himself and just being honest that he's not a perfect person. Yeah, that, and also we don't know what he did wrong we well we know what he did wrong at first but we don't know what he was doing wrong we really need this february oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> we need this november break <laughs> it's come soon it's okay let's just relax oh, okay what i'm thinking is that paul he was very adamant that he wasn't as big as people thought he was and i'm sure we look upon the bible times and be like oh look at all these people they were all giving but it's like were they were they all but that's doing? just also the stories that were recorded that is we don't know everything that was happening during the time and that's that's kind of the point i'm getting to is like we don't know how bad Bible times were. We only saw this really good recorded, like, Ooh, look at how fast this church is expanding. When we might be on the same level or above, or maybe we, we are also below. don't get all the information of how it happened. No, and like everything that all the people that were um, growing the church had to go through, and all the all the problems that they had to 
overcome. We hear some of them, but we may not hear all of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even if you look at the Gospels, it's like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all wrote about the same thing, the resurrection and death of Jesus. But they talked about it in four totally different ways, and there are stories in some that aren't in others. But I, I personally believe that the Bible is like the inspired word of God, so whatever's in it is meant to be in it. Mm -hmm. And if it's not in it, that that's okay. I'm not saying that stuff isn't important, but this stuff is what God meant to be in here. Yeah. And some people don't give like generously because they really want to. Like They feel like it's more of an obligation. And that doesn't happen just like now, but that probably happened in biblical times too. The thing is, I think, I think the whole point of this is to just be together, just to be a community. Yeah. Because, like, you look at King Herod in Acts chapter twelve. He's prideful. He puts himself above everyone else, singular on a pedestal, and he dies. Very harsh, but still. I I think the whole point of this section, at least, of Acts is that we need to all work together. We need to all be on the same level, even if we're totally different. Yes. And community is so important, like, to have, like, not... And in biblical times especially, but now, even in the world we're living in, like, we need people who are surrounding us who have the same, like, values and stand on the Word of God and who are going to help encourage us to, like, fight the good fight. Thank you.